Mount Sinai Hospital, not far from here. Uh, my parents, my father came to Chicago in the early 20s. He came, migrated from Crystal Springs, Mississippi. My mother didn't migrate quite as far. She was in Robbins, Illinois, just south, and uh, moved also in the mid-20s to Chicago. They got married in the early 30s and lived still on the west side, but on Lake Street, on Campbell and Lake Street. Um, we moved in to North Lindell, it was just Lindell at the time, of course, in 1951, shortly after I was born. Um, we moved t two blocks south of here, uh, 21st and Christiana, and my mom is still there right now. I'm just very happy. She celebrated her 98th birthday a few weeks ago, and I'm very excited. And so, uh, my brother and my sister, I have one brother, one sister, and we all grew up here. I'm sorry, we all grew up here on the west side of Chicago. Interestingly, in the 60s, um, went to a number of grammar schools. We started out at Pope School, which is not far from here, out right on Albany. I spent kindergarten, I think kindergarten to third grade. Then they had what they call Pope Branch, where we went to Farragut High School, 2300 South on Christiana. But they had, um, for those of you who know some of the history, they had even then what they call Willis Wagons. We were in um, mobile homes, which they turned into classrooms. So I spent, I think, fourth grade there. Then they built a new school on 21st and St. Louis, uh, Soul Our Crown School. And I spent sixth grade there. Then they sent us over to Spry School uh, over on Marshall Boulevard for seventh and eighth grade. I was very happy to stay at one high school, which was Farragut High School, for the four years. And uh, as you mentioned, we're going to be having, having a big, one of the biggest picnics, I think, in the state. They're celebrating over at the park right now. And so we'll be st uh, definitely stopping by. Um, very honored to say Paul Norrington was a, a good friend and a dear classmate, and we celebrated our 50th year uh, celebration last night with reunion. It was exciting. Um, but yeah, we've been part of North Lyndale our entire, pretty much the major part of our lives. I went to school here in Chicago, uh, Roosevelt University. Been a musician and a teacher the majority, in fact, all of my life I've been doing this. Uh, my wife and I, a wife also grew up on North Lyndale, literally one block south of here. She grew up on 19th and Christiana. We started our music school. It was first called Lyndale Community Music Center. And we called it a music school without walls because we didn't have a building. So we actually just started with a 501c3, which is a non-for-profit. We did it on our kitchen table. And we would go to places wherever there was a need for music. Again, 1979, that's the year they took out a lot of the music and arts out of the public schools. And we said, we got to do better than that. So we had to create something. So I have a music education background. She has a business background. We got together, started the school. And we would go wherever there was a need or a desire for music. So if there was a community center, churches, schools, parochial schools, any place, we would go there and take music instruction. Uh, our very first program, we did a lot of work with all of the schools. Uh, L Learn Charter School at the time was called, I think, Lindale Community Academy. Don't quote me on that. But they were located on the corner of Grinshaw and Homan. And They've since then built a new building across the street and learned the whole Learn Charter system. It's got, I think, about 10 schools now throughout the Chicago area. But we started doing music there. Our very first program was a guitar program. We called it an intergenerational guitar program where we had students who were, would come to school before classes and take guitar lessons. Their parents would have to be part of that in order for them to get the lessons. There was no charge whatsoever. And the great thing about that were those first 12 students we ended up having three generations of students. The students, their parents, and the grandparents would come out and take uh, lessons as well. And so the school eventually grew into what we call now Chicago West Community Music Center because even though we were still centered in North Lindale, we had people coming from all over the communities. Now we have students coming from Austin, Pilsen, uh, uh, East West Garfield Park, Humble Park, and folks coming in from the western suburbs as well, uh, Cicero. Um, Broadview, Maywood, and now we're averaging about 800 students a year at Chicago West. And um, again, but the birthplace, we still do a lot of work right here in the Lindale community. 
Um, some of the musicians, we were talking about this earlier, we have some, a, a number of musicians which came out of Lyondale. The great Benny Goodman, the King of Swing, as they called him. A great vocalist, one of the most important vocalists in terms of music and just a great singer. Um, she was considered the link between jazz, very similar to uh, Billie Holiday, a link between jazz and blues was Miss Dinah Washington, who stayed, I don't know, I don't know, she stayed, I know she stayed here in North Lyndale, a little further west. One of the most important record companies, record labels, was also lo located here in North Lyndale. On Roosevelt, really, I believe, about 3300 west on Roosevelt, between, I think it would be Holman and Christiana, there was a record label called Cobra Records. Uh, in the 1950s, when the blues was really, really urban blues, the whole history about that coming up from the south into Chicago. Uh, this is Chicago is where the urban, I mean the rural blues became electrified. Many of the artists would play over on Maxwell Street. They had a good relationship with the uh, store owners. And so they would allow them to play in front of the stores, play their music, and it would also a a attract uh, customers for the store owners, the Jewish merchants there. And so you can imagine how loud and boisterous it was there. So the musicians had to have amplifiers, electronic amplifiers, which the store owners allowed them to connect inside the stores. And almost all of the major artists, as you can imagine, blues artists, everybody from Muddy Waters, on and on, spent some time on Maxwell Street playing. During the 1950s, uh, the most probably famous blues label was Chess Records by the two uh, Chess Brothers which would, they had the record label down, the company down on 21st and Michigan. Uh, without a doubt, one of the most famous, if not the most famous and productive producer, record producer of blues was Willie Dixon, great Willie Dixon. He wrote so many of the great, great songs and worked with all the great artists. He had a, he, he produced all of the music for Chess Records. But he got into a little bit of a disagreement over money, I believe it was, with the Chess guys. So he decided he wanted to split and go on his own where there was a gentleman who owned a little mom and pop record store up on Roosevelt Road, records in a TV shop. And many of these stores in those days had uh, machines where they could actually burn records. They could create their own records. And so he came over and the gentleman who owned this particular shop, they started a record label called Cobra Records. And so not necessarily to compete with Chess Records, but he wanted to get a better deal. So he brought in some artists to work at this particular record label. Three of the artists almost really kind of changed the sound of blues. One which was still around was the great buddy guy was on the label. The other was a young man who died much too early but lived on the west side named Magic Sam. Sam Magic, Magic was his name. He died quite young of a, uh, I think a brain aneurysm. But they developed a style of music, again, it was electrified, but it was more jazz oriented, uh, very similar to what B.B. King was doing. B.B. King also came from the South, of course, but he had a big band sound with his blues, much more urban, if you will. But, but uh, Sam, Magic Sam, had a, an unbelievable ability to sing, improvise, play very, very jazz, but still very, very gritzy blues. And those artists really kind of transcended, changed a lot of the music. So we hear a lot about the artists who came from the South, but of course in the 60s, the British invasion, that's when the artists came from Europe and they loved blues, many of them, particularly the Rolling Stones, uh, even the Beatles, they were really more into Motown, but all, so many of the artists from Europe were and still are influenced by the blues, particularly the blues that came out of Chicago.